I, <laughs> as far as I'm anyway, you're here. Look, let's welcome Jonathan and let's welcome. I don't know where she's gone, but she's disappeared somewhere. No, she's not there. All right. Ah, there, oh, she there she is. Gazelle, is. Jonathan, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hello, good good afternoon. to see you again, I'm Jonathan so and Gazelle. Hello, how are you? Welcome to the show. Thank Gazelle. you so much. Thanks for having me. A biggest thanks to Jonathan, my best friend from UK. Yep. Uh, I was amazing, actually. Now I'm, so, I'm, I'm wonderful. You know, words can't express how excited I am to be with you guys. It's a pleasure yeah. to meet you. You're, you're nice and quiet. You want to probably speak <laughs> up a little bit as well. There's a couple of people in Belgium can't hear you. Um, where she, where she, are you? Where are you? Where are you, Gazelle? Uh, it sounds like you're next right door. Right now, I'm living in Kuala Lumpur, but I'm from Iran. You're from Iran, okay? Yes. And you're at the moment you're in, is right. twinned with Correct. East Croydon. <laughs> it's not okay. Right, Jonathan, you were a big, big hit when you came, Neil. <laughs> is that too much even for you? <laughs> <laughs> God, Jonathan, you were a big hit. We had a lot to talk about last time, so we did. Right. Take it, take it away. Tell us about everything that you're doing, and then tell us why yeah. we're delighted. Is... We are being joined from, all the way from Kuala Lumpur. Indeed. Yes, fill us in, Jonathan. This is going to be good because I'm a big fan of what you do. Go for it. Well, I very much appreciate you asking me back. Thanks, guys, and I, I, I really have the hope negatives that... back now. What negatives? Oh, yes. Yeah. Right. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. That, that, I'll tell you what, that shows your age, mate. We don't have film anymore, do we? Do we not? No. No. In Why fact, not? I was talking just Are the just Beatles this still together, Jonathan? Did, uh, you not get, did you not get that memo? memo? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, Are uh, the Beatles uh, still playing together? I, yeah, I Glenn, so, yeah. Yeah, Glenn Miller's playing in East Croydon tonight, uh, mate. Thank He's on the God. Moon. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'm looking forward to seeing Buddy Holly soon because he's coming Absolutely. over. Absolutely. Right, before move on. I go Jonathan, into my, go on. Yes, before I go into my thing, hi, Russ. I don't know if you saw the message. I was listening to another of your lives the other day. On your computer, you've got a, a, a capacity called Sticky Keys. I, I did see your message, and it yeah. sounded smutty, so I liked it straight away, but I don't <laughs> understand what the hell it means. Fine. So, Sticky Keys is a uh, function in Windows. Right. If you press your Shift key down Steady. five or six five <laughs> five or six times in a row, yeah. um, it will go blip, blip, and this little box will come up, and you yeah. can click on the Sticky Keys function. Sticky Keys basically holds down yeah. your Shift or your Control or your Alt or your Function button yeah. so that you can, with one hand, yeah. press the press the Shift, get a capitalized letter, then carry on typing uh. every time you want a capital. Uh. So, yeah, so we'll talk. Uh, I'll basically... tell you what else I found, which has Tom? been a real boon. Gazelle, I know this is boring as hell to you, but stick with it. <laughs> what the hell? Um, is that I, I went on the line. Somebody very kindly wanted to sell me a speech to text recognition system. It was 400 quid. And I thought, no, I'm feeling crap enough as it is. I ain't laying out 400 quid. No. I'm sure it's marvelous. And queues up to smoke salmon on a Sunday morning, but I'm not getting it. And then I did some research online uh, with what's left of my brain. And I found if you press the Windows key, the little mm -hmm. sign, and press the letter H simultaneously, yes, it immediately does dictation. It's huh. great. So I, I know. Who knew? Sorry. Huh. Who, the, who, who the hell knew? Yeah, yeah that, was, that wasn't Butch. Do you want to try it again? Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, let's try it again so you see more Butch. It immediately <gasps> does dictation. Now, that just sounds like you're had two bottles of coca-cola and burping and um so you press this is for everybody it's really yeah. good you press the windows little function button and you press the letter h up comes a microphone you press that and so my emails i'm dictating it's not as and it's you know because i can't type yeah, uh, yeah. emails dictating and it works on anything yeah wow really i've just tried it it works it's it's wow. really good, and they keep it a secret, so you don't need to go and spend. Uh, and, and I'm not being rude about the person who was being very very helpful, and mm. in no way. But you know, I'd rather do it for free, because mm. eventually, please God, my hand will heal. Right, let's get yes. back to why you're let's here, Mister Social yes. Me Too. Okay, so uh, hi everyone uh, who's watching, and um, uh, I'm Jonathan uh, McDonald, and uh, a chap called Gregory Austin, and I began. 
uh, what started out as LinkedIn Me Too and has evolved to social Me Too because we knew content or connections on LinkedIn. So Gazelle was a connection of mine. And until I heard, and it was almost a throwaway comment, one of my connections said, oh yeah, I get three or four DMs every day from men saying, oh, you're so beautiful. I want you to be my wife mm -hmm. or I'm a soldier and I need your help or whatever it might be. And I went, really? She goes, yeah. And it was the matter of factness of it that shocked me. Gazelle, did you get my, my message that says, I've only got one working hand and I'm really screwed. Do you want to come to South East London? Did you um, get that yeah, message? Yeah. Oh, great. Because I'm waiting for a reply. Move on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, you, it's visible for me. I hope you all can hear me clearly because yeah. I don't have any mic. No, as no, you can we, see. Can, we, we can hear you. We can, we can Gazelle. You, I like, can't wait to hear your story. Okay. So, Yes, and so from last time you asked me to come back, Ross, thank you, and, and Neil, um, and I thought that, so Gazelle was one of the first women that appeared on video for the shows uh, that I produced, mm -hmm. and I'll, I need to say no more. If you, in fact, you can minimise my frame, let Gazelle speak. I'm not minimising your frame. <laughs> that would be ridiculous. All right. Okay. I really, um, really yeah. want to hear this because I really want to understand the female point of, of view on this. Um, I'm, I'm going to say no more, and I really want to hear your story, Gazelle. Please, please go ahead and share. Sure. Uh, first of all, again, greetings to all of our audience and everybody who is watching us. I'm Gazelle, and uh, I'm business developer. Women empowerment, public speaker, and I'm also passionate model and actress. Actually, the main, main reason that I made friends with uh, Jonathan more than being a, just a LinkedIn connection, uh, it was my horrible story. Then I, I found out he already uh, found a very good platform of uh, social meet you where we can freely speak and we can uh, we can raise our voice and there is somebody like him and his teammates who can listen to us. Actually, for me, I have many, many horrible stories that I can share with you. But for oh, today, good. we've I'm got gonna, an hour. Just... We've got an hour. Knock yourself out. All right, good. Uh, but for today, I don't want to take a very, very long time, you know, to explain more. Later, you can check our YouTube channel of uh, Jonathan McDonald. Um, but for today, actually, what I have since my childhood until now, I mean, until yesterday, <laughs> so many, many, many uh, crazy things, uh, many misbehaviors I face, abusive conversations, and uh, um, many things, you know. But the best part I can share with you is uh, when I moved to Kuala Lumpur, I moved to Malaysia. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, since the age of 19, I was traveling other countries as an interpreter, English, US, Persian. Then uh, at the age of 24, I came to Malaysia. I moved. Why? Because I wanted to have a brighter future in a better country. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, then when I came here, I was supposed to stay here for four months only, not for a very long time, but it's already five years I'm here. It was because I got a very nice job offer um, from from an immigration company, uh, educational immigration company. And after two months of my residency in Malaysia, uh, the boss, I mean, the main manager, he told me that, uh, yeah, because you are so talkative, I really want you to be my immigration consultant. I was like, okay, sure, I can make it. But I didn't know this person is so creepy. Mm. Um, I have been harassed by him Harris, after, did you by, say, I think after Gazelle, one Gazelle, month. Whoa, hello, hello. Gazelle, did you say you've been harassed by him? Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, for the beginning, everything was, seems to be okay, seemed to be okay, but, um, you know, sometimes some people, they give you some vibes, which is, yep. which yep. is disgusting for you, and you are like, mm. Yeah, I know. Why he is not? He was not doing anything, but his vibes was so creepy. Mm -hmm. 
Unfortunately, you have a sixth sense. So nasty. You have a sixth sense of when people are creepy. Um, that's and I think I mean. sometimes we're trained out of ignoring that sixth sense. And I think this has been a massive problem yeah. because, wow. because mm -hmm. if if you get that, for want of a better word, gut feeling about something, yeah. but then it's, oh, mm -hmm. I can't say anything. He's my boss. He's more important than me. My career depends, that's on, it. Other right. people depend on it. And that has been a massive problem. And it's all come to a head recently here in the UK, as I'm sure you know. Um, and but with things like Me Too and of course social Me Too, that, that's beginning to be broken down, which is why I'm, I'm fascinated in this because everyone has a right to, shall we say, walk unmolested, if you like. And I mean that emotionally or physically, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course yeah. we find people attractive. Of course people flirt. There's not, not wrong with that in my book, but th there's, a, there's ways and means. And just mm -hmm. thinking it's okay to do just because you're an attractive woman, it's, it's not. One it's of not, the one of the mind. things one of the things that Kazo um, uh, just mentioned when we did a recording with her, which was so profound, and that is that social platforms hmm. are where business is done. Yeah, and yeah. she cannot not be on social platforms, mm -hmm. and so it is sexual abuse at work. When, exactly. When for social me too, for for so there was a, a story in the UK about the first first gay footballer, a yep. seventeen year old boy. Seventeen year old kid. Up. And yeah, good for him. He's going to get trolled mercilessly, but hopefully, some older players who are also gay will come out now and support. The thing about um, that. The thing about that. Sorry, I was on Talk TV this week and. That, that story broke and my point was why is this even a story if it was 1968 maybe 1978 and a footballer yeah. comes out as homosexual okay maybe it's a story it's 2022 for mm. christ's sake you know who gives a shit who cares if anything the, the guy the guy is there negative reaction to it if mm. anything that's the shocking thing nowadays if anything well, should be a story what i don't, it's what I don't get about that story we we'll just take a little a detour for a second about this i wasn't going to bring this up but you've opened the door jonathan is this the footballer should only be judged on whether he's a good footballer or not what he does off the field i couldn't give a monkeys it's absolutely irrelevant but i wanted to be clear and i said the same thing on talk tv and i'll say it here um is is that good for him brave of him he's 17 17 you you don't really know which way is up you think you're running the world but you, you haven't even started yet but good for him uh, i'm sure with you know just the sheer statistics must be there must be so many gay footballers who mm. are too scared why they're too scared i don't know because they think they're going to be bullied but the bottom line with that, and this goes really to the heart of men's radio station and what we do on women's radio station as well, would be this. <laughs> what is the worst? That can... So the guy's gay. Does that mean he can't play football? Well, no. Nonsense. It's, it's a nonsense. It's the two, the, there's no correlation between the two. So it's only that people in the crowd or whatever, for whatever brutal, stupid, nonsensical reason are going to be rude and troll him at the matches and on social media why what are they scared of what are they scared of what difference does it make to them that's a very None. good question why what are they frightened what, what is of? stopping them accepting that what are they scared of are they scared are that they? they're gay i mean Maybe. and if they were who cares so what well there is that that's projection that's projecting is, stuff it, you is, can't it, learn is, onto it is project it is projection i just don't under i don't understand but it, i thought what was stunned because it was front page of the times as well and it was front page on a lot of papers over here mm -hmm. i couldn't believe that it was such a big deal that a no i agree said, my I'm first getting, reaction I was, was like so what? what the hell is this about was so what so someone yeah, i mean it was completely I'm... the whole thing was like a so and but the, this is the thing you see we three presumably heterosexual males ha have never had to deal with the things that someone who's gay who's not except so the last 10 15 20 years in the uk especially down in the southeast corner we're a lovely mixing urban bohemian mm. environment yeah but you've not yeah. got to go far mm. before and i mean far north before it's a 
I'm the man of the house. I work. You, yeah. you, yeah. That oh, goes on. Table, it's a weird thing. My house. That goes Do you on know today. we're we're a tiny little island stuck in the North Sea, hmm. right? That's what we are. That's what the UK is. A little bit bit of rock. It's tiny, right? I don't even think we're the size of Texas. I don't know. We're we're tiny, hmm. and you're quite right. You know, I live in London. I'm London born and bred. Neil's the same. I hang out in Soho with my pals all the time. I've done theatre, obviously, and music. It's nothing. It is part of my normal life, right? I don't, I don't see it. I don't see it. And you're quite right. You can just travel a bit outside London, and it's like, what the? It's only hell when you go this? out of London because we have a holiday home on the south coast, and there's a little touch of racism down there, oh, uh, which really oh, surprised wow. me. Wow. Um, just, just you know, I've grown up with people of colour, or all my life and gay people and it never has and never will bother me so mm. when i go when i take myself there i sort of take myself with me and my attitude with me and it's like when mm. i hear that i'm like really what mm. what century is this but it kind of comes it's full scary, circle back it? to, it's back a, to what a we're shock Brazil. it's a real shock well, it is and it comes shock. full circle because how how as a professional woman like you how do you cope in the online workplace with this i mean are there are there measures in place to protect you i mean talk, talk us through an average day of how you'd be dealing with this if i may gazelle gazelle oh all right uh, sorry sorry uh because you your voice off? was Were you thinking about TV tonight? Talking with jonathan actually uh for me um i have been faced you know to this kind of abusive behavior since the age of six six uh yes yes right um by some by my friend's brother unfortunately oh, but for me how you old, know hang, uh, gazelle, I, gazelle, sorry how old, how old was your friend's brother to try and position this was, you're six uh, years that, old you're that a baby. Time, uh, 12 12 years Jesus. this is why i said yeah. to you on the last interview wasn't it Russ? Yeah. oh children abusing yeah. children that's the sorry I, gazelle actually actually oh, i'm coming oh. from a third world country unfortunately you know where uh women outside uh they are not they are not safe i'm not gonna say so safe no there is no safety for women actually you know i was just walking uh just walking you know people guys they come they like they feel like okay now they have to touch your private parts in public mm -hmm. in kuala lumpur no is this in yeah. iran is this in Iran or Kuala Lumpur? Iran or Kuala Lumpur. Unfortunately, it's so common. Still common. And I'm sorry, you know, they I didn't, don't I didn't hear you. I didn't hear you. I'm sorry. Is this in Iran or Kuala Lumpur or both? Um, No, not in KL. No, not in Kuala Lumpur. My own country. Iran. In Iran. Right. Okay. In Iran. So you're saying as a woman in yeah. Iran, you're walking yeah. down the street and guys think it's completely okay to go up and, exactly and molest you yes Blimey. and yet it's the same country that's got so so many rigid rules around this kind of thing yeah go spot jo jo yeah, join, the so line. join the line yeah man. it's join something common you know for people it's like well what's wrong what's wrong with that it's actually it's my fault because i wore something attractive to attract guys to come and touch me and it's always yeah. i am the one who will be blamed you know, yes. once a few, uh, a few years ago, before I wanted to come here at the age of 22, hmm. uh, I was I was outside. It was nine o'clock, nine nine p.m. Uh, with I was with my friend. My friend is an old woman, like my older sister. I was we were outside and we were we had to cross from the highway, but we were like okay because we we had two options to cross from highway itself. Or to use the bridge, and we prefer to use the bridge for our own safety. Yeah, uh, but sense. the bridge is not safe. And we were in the bridge, and five guys they came to me. Two of them they hold my hand from behind. The other one was uh, touching my private part, and the uh, and the fourth one he stole my money, and the fifth one he was busy touching my friend. My friend, after that, she went to hospital for two weeks. She has been admitted in hospital for two weeks. And for me, I was like, what can I do now? 
you know so, that, uh, so because... that's that's a nice little snapshot of life in iran um, not to mention the new well I, I, I am yeah. sorry that you had to experience that well, it's unbelievable. because that is just bloody disgusting i'm sorry it is disgusting but and, and i'll and, just check in for a moment and the oh, hypocrisy sorry. the hypocrisy is fantastic yes, utter hypocrisy well no because here's the thing and this is the problem this is such the problem right. russ neil myself i just put in the chat a thing about the everyday sexism projects. So I saw this woman being interviewed on BBC News three days ago. Mm -hmm. In this country, all day, every day, men, not all men, some men behave like this to women in this country. We cannot exactly. other this and say it's Iran because it happens here every day but jonathan jonathan i'm going to stop you i'm going to stop you for a second i am oh. not going to join the train that says all men are raping no 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 all men are terrible no. i'm not i'm not having that because no, it's no not all not all it's i mean i'm nonsense. I, for, for and i'm really tired i am tired of having to apologize for yeah. being white and i'm tired of having to apologize for being a man i will do neither it's how it is. So get over it. Sorry, I can't. Well, that, that's the pendulum swinging too far the other way, and that's the mm, problem yes. with things like this. From, I, from I, wherever there's something important like this, the pendulum will swing, and it generally swings too far the other way. And yes, there is a small group of people that think yeah, that all so men. Are, I are did. I was very. I was very careful, Russ, to qualify. Not all men. It yeah. certainly isn't all men, and lots of the people I know are very much supportive of women. You've asked me back on this show of because course. of that. Yes. Neil was asking back. So it's not something where we, unless you have done this to someone, hmm. you don't need to apologize for anything. Well, unless I you... And, and I haven't. And no. also, I tell you, when... Uh, well, I won't be using public transport for the <clears throat> foreseeable future. When I do, I won't even make eye contact with anybody. I don't need their bullshit. I don't need that. I didn't like the way you look at me. I, d I sit, I have my audio book on and I have my eyes closed. What a way to live. Is that really how we are? Is that Again, really how Again, it's that pendulum are? swinging too far in the opposite it's, direction. It drives me nuts, but I'm not going to give anybody an inch of an open door to say, oh, I didn't like the way he looked at me. Oh, he looked at me in a straight... Screw you. I'm not having well, it. Well, I, 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 I will we'll, we'll come back to Gazelle in a moment, but I would, I, as you uh, know from last time, I, I, I would challenge that because um, mm. uh, when I go on public transport or, in fact, everywhere, all the time, all day, every day, all day, every day to everybody, woman, mm. man, mm. dog, grandmother, whoever it yep. is, I'm an, I'm an entirely sociable person. Mm. And I was. I, well, yeah, but you see, the fact that you're not now no, is you? not, I think, because of society, because I am behaving in a way that you used to. I'm friendly. I am sociable. Mm. I am chatty. How do you think I got to meet Gazelle mm. or the other women exactly. in my Just lucky. You're um, right. And, I, and that's how I am. And I like making new friends. I like meeting yeah. people. And yeah. you know, I'm a red-blooded male. I find women very attractive. But there's a line. And consent yeah. is key. And yes. on the wrong side of consent, I, I, I won't go there. On the right yeah. side of consent, it's a very big playing field and there's a lot of fun to be had there, 100%. Yeah. But consent is key. And the fact Indeed. that you experienced that, I, I feel like apologising to you on behalf of those idiots that did it because no one has the right to treat you that way, Gazelle. And it angers me. And I think even more so now that I have a daughter. I, I don't know. How, how old are you, Gazelle, if you don't mind me asking? 22. 22. Well, I have a daughter who's 27, and that's yeah. made me even more aware of, of this issue because, um, you know, it is it is a problem that this kind of bovine male mentality that thinks it's okay to behave that way, and it's not. And it, and and isn't that, shouldn't that be a given? It, it, well, I mean, in tw what century is this? In 2022, in these yeah. so-called enlightened times, in the Western world, well, we're still we're wrestling not, with we're this We're not issue. enlightened. We're going... Let, let's 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 call a spade a spade. We're not enlightened. We're going no. backwards. Yeah, Race relations is going backwards. The division between men and women exactly. is going backwards. It's all going exactly. the wrong direction. And this, and we see, could talk about this forever because because it's about being divisive, 
And you have to ask yourself, why is the world so divisive? It's a theme we come back to time and again on men's radio stations. There is a reason why everything is so divided, because if you divide, you weaken. And a weakened population, uh, a weakened population is a malleable population. And that's where it's, that's, that's the underlying cause. And that's scary. What were you going to say, Gazelle? Actually, uh, for this, of course, I'm not here to say all men are the same or all women are victims. No way, no. Uh, but uh, for this, uh, to answer your question, why this uh, crazy thing still happening and why we are going backward, I blame society. Why the society is already blaming us we women, anything happens, we are the ones who are going to be feeling. And what I can do, what I have to do as a woman, okay, at the age of 12, I'm allowed to get married. Uh, after that, uh, of whoa, course, whoa, I whoa, have whoa. to be You're allowed. Of... Stop, 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 Gazelle. Take a breath. Mm -hmm. At the age of 12, you can get married. Yes. Did you just say that? Yes. Not by choice, mate. Yes. No, I don't, I don't assume choice, you're 12 years old, you want to get... Jesus uh, this is actually this is happening in uh, this is what is happening in third world countries everywhere in the Africa. world they're going forward those countries are going backward you know that's why for me they're not third world just like fourth world fifth world i don't know which world but i know they're not world, this is what right? i know and they see women as slave of men men are here women are nothing we are just baby producers we are just some tools for your for men's sexual you know wants and know. needs for their desires i know That's and i don't agree with it I, I i don't where's the most um enlightened place you've you've lived the most forward-thinking place uh for me it was canada when i went to canada i found them very forward-thinking there uh -huh. um what, what, what about you you've obviously traveled quite a lot in the world where's the most forward-thinking place for you where you're freest to be who you want to be shall we say to be London. honest, uh, exactly. <laughs> London. But uh, before, before, before I, I, I start, I started traveling other countries. I was like, okay, Middle East is kind of the countries are kind of the same, but the best actually is UAE. But since I'm honest with you guys, since I'm in Malaysia, I'm, I feel so, so safe. You know, I feel. I have some right to talk. I have some right to, um, uh, to for self defense. I can define myself. I can, I can show. Hey, yes, I'm a woman. Although I'm a foreigner here, I'm, um, I'm not local. I still, I'm not a local. But I mm. still can talk. I still can. Uh, there is nobody here, you know, to to stop me or to, uh, to mute me forever. Although I had a very, very a crazy experience with my ex boss, but I still could quit my job. And that person right now in Malaysia, he is wanted. Why? Because you imagine I was on the phone talking with my clients and some hands were coming, touching me. And I was like, hey, please stop it. I don't like it. Okay, let's mm. talk with my client. No, and he was like, no, I'm giving you energy. <gasps> I'm well, giving really? you energy. Oh, I'm going to oh, write that one down. Was it? <laughs> well, I'm giving you energy. Oh, that's I don't, I don't, bastard. I don't Sorry. understand what that energy means. But before, because, you know, from my background, since the age of six, these things happen to me a lot. I already prepared myself. And I was like, I told myself, Gazelle, you can overcome on it. So don't worry. But the reason, as you mentioned, uh, Mr. Ro Rose, right? Rose, how t am I Rose. pronouncing your name? Rose. I don't know. Okay. Is there a Mr. Rose here? Mr. Rose. Mr. Rose. Calling Mr. Rose. <laughs> Mr. Rose to reception. Rose. Dr. Rose to yeah. reception. Dr. Rose and, to reception. Okay. Uh, as you mentioned, I did not come here to go back my country. Why? The reason is because my father, he sold his single asset which was his property and he paid me and then he was like okay you go to malaysia and forget me i'm not there anymore to support you you have to support yourself and at the same time you are the one who must support me because i'm already retired 
And this person knew that I'm I have no plan to go back my own country. So I had to stay here. That's why he was like, okay, anything I tell her, she won't say no. But <clears throat> uh, for one year and eight months, I had to work with him. And every day I was, you know, I was arguing with him. No, no. He was like, no, you have to sleep with me. I said, I don't want to sleep with you. Why I have to do that? I'm virgin. Anyway, you know, I was, well, I, I was your... every day. It... Oh, wait, Giselle, take a breath. Yes. How is um? How old was this boss of yours? Sorry. How old was your boss? I was twenty-four, and he was uh, thirty-eight. Okay. Yeah. But why so he was already twenty-two? <laughs> so hang on, you were twenty-four. So you just a moment ago said you were twenty-two. How 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 old are you actually? Right now, I'm twenty-nine. This October, well, I'm going to be. There we go, Neil. So. You have to dig a little deeper. Um, okay. Okay. You see, one of the reasons is, and before everyone goes, oh, please don't. The, the Amber Heard Johnny Depp thing, I can give a shit about two multimillionaires having a spat. I mean, it's just entertainment for everybody else. What I do, mm -hmm. the point about it is, mm -hmm. is if you're going to have a case like that, it dilutes every time we meet a gazelle. Every yes. time we meet someone who has yes. suffered genuine abuse, abuse, who has been sexually molested, all of those things, and you're not a multimillionaire with a huge legal team and a PR team and a makeup team and, and a press team and a management team and an agent yeah. team and all the rest of it, it dilutes the argument. And that is why yeah. the Johnny Depp Amber Heard thing is so poisonous i agree it is because they I turn it into a freaking circus and yeah it's very entertaining of course it is because it's pure showbiz it's pure melodrama and all the rest of it but the... it's a very bad thing for women who have suffered abuse but but and i'm sure jonathan will agree it does highlight the case and i had so many messages of men who are abused by women it's not a one-way street yeah. and it's that that you see and 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 hopefully russ this won't be our last uh chat on a live radio stream that you see is exactly why uh, i've set up social me too there is so much abuse online and mm -hmm. offline so mm -hmm. on on the social me too website i've got categories i've got death threats i've got Jesus. rape threats i've got murder threats there's categories that people can uh submit stories mm -hmm. because these are the mm -hmm. kind of stories about what's going on and gazelle's speaking of her actual in the world physical experience is the one reason i think and she can correct me but that was the one reason why she was able to talk on video about these experiences because she's been hardened throughout the whole of her life and women right. especially will internalize abuse be it on social media or otherwise mm -hmm. as to what did i do and men who are suffering so men who are abused by women the the shame mm -hmm. Because the embarrassment. Of course, yeah. Oh, you're supposed to enjoy being touched by a woman. You're supposed to enjoy this as a man. You're not supposed to enjoy getting punched, are you? Yeah. Well, no. consent is consent is consent. consent is exactly. Consent. So, so I mean, we've got a situation whereby the way people are behaving towards each other, mm -hmm. it's like so dark energy in the universe is forcing things apart from each other at yeah, a faster yes, rate yes, yes, that seems to be what's happening the way you refer to people drawing back to their religious or their country mm. barriers people are shrinking away from the world whilst at the same time we have more access to the world than we've ever had and i, I think, think that's interesting I'm, I'm a little more optimistic than that i do think there's an awful lot of people waking up um, uh, or maybe i'm just in a in a circle of people that are having all quite enlightened conversations because there is a massive movement to this kind of the very opposite of division of unity um which is i suppose one of my deep 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 values in my kind of spiritually kind of way um and that includes consent of course it does um just it's not it's not and it's not rocket science to treat people respectfully and well 
My rule see, of thumb on social sorry, media sorry, is sorry. if I wouldn't say it to your face, I wouldn't put it online. People think social media is a place to hide. No, it's, mm. not. it's social. If, if you would say it, as, you know, Neil, and, and I'm sure everybody listening and watching around the world would agree. If you haven't got the balls to go and say to somebody's face, that it's pathetic to write it. It's pathetic, and I always but think that's that's some, the mindset I always we think live in. Some sad loser sitting in your mum's spare bedroom, you know. But that I don't. That that isn't the case. That's, that's the problem. No, but see, that's how I see it. Because I know that's that how you see it because that diminishes these idiots. Yeah, but that's the head. whole. That's the whole problem. That's what I'm pushing head. back on. Yeah, so we three men who are doing things to help other men, who are doing things to help women, yeah. we're that enlightened bubble that Neil's talking about. But yeah. the people that, whether it's a man abusing a woman or a woman abusing a man online, those are not people in their mother's bedroom, in that, that stereotypical image of what an abusive person is. Of the sad loser with the Tesco's laptop. It's dressed no longer the case. It's right. the case that everybody has this zero to ten anger. Yeah. So I, I'm I, I have a Twitter thing for social me too, but I don't engage in it at all. Twitter is like deliberately infuriating, well, and so people gonna, get used. Jonathan, to it. Jonathan, there was a <clears> comment. You know, here's the thing about Twitter, and Gazelle said this right at the front end of the show. Is this? If you use it as a tool, I use social media because everything I do relies on it. The radio, my my other radio work, my books, my stand-up, all of that. You know, I don't have an agent. I don't have a manager. I don't have PR people. So I do it all myself. Everything you see really for men's radio and not for women's. Oh, hello. Oh. She's given up. She'll given up. I think she was bored. Um, don't know. And um, so you've got to use it judiciously. Mm. One of the things, and I always say with my with one of my best pals, who's Ray Gelato, the jazz jazz saxophonist, we meet every Saturday morning. He says, and I got into a row, and I said, Ray, you're bloody mad. I never engage. I read some of this shit, and it is shit. And I think you're an idiot. And I'm not going to give you the satisfaction of engaging. I look at it, I scroll past it. So for me, Twitter has been amusing, charming, and supportive. With, with Facebook, I don't put stuff up which is controversial. I might talk to Neil about it. We might do it on the show. But on Facebook, I try to do it as entertainment. And how do I think that that's responding? I got over 800 messages about my broken hand. Mm -hmm. Over 800. Hundred, I couldn't believe it. It's lovely. You know, there's me and my dog. There's me and my dog. Eight hundred messages. I was stunned and and overwhelmed by people's kindness and niceness and the offers of help from people that I don't actually know that well. Can I come round? And I'm not being silly. They're not. They're, can we drop some stuff? Off? How kind is that? Very. You know, if you very. put good stuff out, I'm sure Neil, this goes to the heart of Neil's. Well, they say like attracts like, don't they? Yeah, you put nice stuff out. You can get nice stuff back. Now, Gazelle, you know, what you're enduring, like that story about you walking over the bridge with your friend is horrendous. The other side, the other side to that is this. Uh, I, my career, apart from broadcasting, was always advertising. Uh, both in New York and in London, and in advertising in its heyday. Yes, I really was exactly like Mad Men. It was that. That is who we were, right? And we worked very hard, and boy, we played hard, most of which I can never repeat, right? We played very hard. But it was an understanding always of consent. Even in our early days at Capital, you know, uh, we yeah. were all pals together, and it was a wonderful, wonderful atmosphere. But it was with mutual consent and mutual respect. I have the Always. same relationship with Always. the lady I work with on Radio Jackie, Nikki Patrick. I call her my radio wife because we've been together for so long on the radio. And she's a very happily married woman, by the way, and not to me. Um, but And we banter. Some of the things we say off air, people will be yeah. shocked at. But 
that, but the consent's in place. It's an absolute mutual respect and consent, and we understand that we're doing because it. Because there's an understanding. To entertain people, I'm going to be, some I'm going people to be, don't. I'm going to be blunt. There's an understanding, and Gazelle, forgive me, because what you've said is, is horrible. But there is an understanding. You can have wonderful relationships with people with crazy banter and you can push it to the limit but there is an oh, yeah. understanding you're not going to suddenly leap over the table and grope them or attempt to rape them or do something ghastly i know we can all be adult about it you know and the word no i don't know about in iran obviously it doesn't work at all no it means exactly it that means no, no, means no. Not all in iran but the rest of the, the word no if you're a decent human being means exactly that that's what it means. I, I, yeah. I <clears throat> go, Neil. I'm just, I'm just kind of thinking on my feet here. I'm looking. I, I guess I'm looking for the right words that I want to say to uh, Gazelle because I'm just, as I said, it angers me that people that, that forgive me, you know, a beautiful young woman like yourself who wants to be successful, wants to be happy, just average normal human desires, has to endure this shit from from people that think they've got some sort of god given right to do it. It's so a, it's talk, an irony. It's an irony that the Gazelle, more superior people Gazelle think Gazelle they are, the more inferior they act. Right, Gazelle? Can I ask you a question? And I'd like Jonathan then yeah, to sure. comment. And my question yes. is this: Neil just said something which, to me, is perfectly innocent. And you just said a beautiful young woman, etc., etc., etc. Have we got to the stage in life when you're not even allowed to say that? I don't think so. Well, I hope not. I, I'm asking the question. Please. Yeah. So, how do you um, feel about that? Unfortunately, unfortunately, now I'm on this camera and now I'm interviewing with you is because I'm not in my own country. And I don't know what's going to happen to me after that. <laughs> because, uh, unfortunately, my country, women, they must be mm, mute, zip it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You have not to talk. Uh, I'm the one who will seduce guys. I'm the one who will, you know, will wear something for the guys to come to me, to touch me in public or anywhere. Actually, you know, even even in university. In university, in my country, unfortunately, is a place that people, they will do, you know, sexual activity. In Everywhere in the world, in the university, they will study, except my country. Uh, but uh, for me, you know, as, as a person who has been harassed in many ways since my ch childhood until I came here, or I, I mean, until uh, adult, like, like adulthood right now, um, I was like, uh, it's okay. For the beginning, of, of course, I even was not allowed, I even didn't know how to speak it about, uh, how to speak about it to my own father, to my own brothers. I was really scared because- Is your, mo uh, is your mother still alive, Gazelle? Is your mother Sorry? still alive? Is your mother still alive? Yes, my mother and father both of because them. Because you've yes, only mentioned alive. it's interesting. You've only ever mentioned your father. Your mother hasn't come up once in conversation, and I'm wondering, can you not speak to your mother about any of these things? Um, actually, I'm I'm a best friend with my mom. Yeah, I remember when first time uh, I had an abusive behavior from my friend's brother at the age of six. Mm. I was just keep crying and when I came back because I was at her place we were neighbors and when I came back to my own home I was just crying out loud my mom was like um I guess what happened to you why do you keep crying I said mama I can't tell you it took exactly one hour I tell her what happened to me why mm -hmm. because I have two brothers my siblings all are older than me mm -hmm. my both brothers they're so strict and still bigots I can say that and I was like, if I tell that to my brother, you know, because I was just six years old. I was scared if my brother can kill me or, I don't know, or do something hang on, against hang on, me. Hang on, hang oh, on. Wait I'm a, a minute. I'm, I'm, I'm oh, a wait little a confused. I'm, no, I've I'm got little, this. I'm, I'm a little confused here. If you, if you had told your parents, would they have not gone, logic dictates, they would have gone round and sorted this little, no, Jonathan's shaking his head. It and instead, been you're in a culture where you, the, where the people you should be able to open up to and trust the most would actually blame you for it happening at six years old? Yeah. That is effing disgusting. Of course it's disgusting. It is. It is. I agree with you. But thankfully, uh, that time when that happened to me, my brother, he... 
he hit that person, my friend's brother. And my friend's brother, he was in coma for one week. And my brother went to prison because of me. Okay. Um, thankfully, this I have a couldn't get much family. worse, could it, Jonathan? Bloody hell, this is a story and a half. What did he hit him with, a crowbar? What did he hit? What do you mean? He I, hit him and he went into a coma. I, yeah, wow. yeah, that's right. But unfortunately, not my family. My family, they're already, uh, they're kind of open-minded. But uh except my brothers actually but now no they are fine but um some families you know the father will kill daughter easily at the age of 14 uh, and she has killing. been killed years ago. And we're it's supposed to say that's okay it's not okay it's rubbish it's not okay yeah she has been because, killed why? by her because father she has been hit by her father because she got a boyfriend at the age of 14 and, and the father the family? already and the father, sorry, uh, the father was already interested in her to have sex with her. And then when she said no, the father killed her at 6 a.m. Now he's just in prison. Nothing no, nothing will happen to him. He, he, then he can come up uh, anytime. Uh, no worries. Another I'm thing good. happened. Yeah, but don't forget Israel's a terrible country, obviously. See, this is what makes me sick to my stomach. You know, See, I thought you were talking about honesty. There, there is this crap. There is. And also, there is. so we do not, and I'm sorry, this is the fact, we do not want this garbage imported into the United Kingdom. No. If you're going to live in the United Kingdom, you abide by the laws of the United Kingdom. Yeah. If you go to America, you abide by American laws. You go to France, you abide by France. Exactly. You don't bring your own bullshit laws with you like a little you backpack. Agree. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And some people don't want me, any of this. Some people you think I'm being racist this. when I say that, and it's got nothing to do it's with not race, racist. It's not racist. It's not Neil. Not remotely Neil, racist. You go to Italy, right? You don't say, "Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm abiding by British laws." Yeah, but you're in, you're in Pisa or you're in Florence, mate. You abide by Italian laws. Is that it's quite racist? It's quite. fact. I agree. It's Giselle, fact. Can I ask you something? What there is a. I'm optimistic enough to think there is a growing group of men and women with a sort of more enlightened inclusive outlook what can particularly men do that would help you personally right now how what what can the average man what could what could i do what could my attitude be towards you now to to help you and to contribute to you the most regarding this um to be honest this can happen only in developed country because as um, mr rose already mentioned uh, i believe there is a hell i believe there is a hell that's why now i'm here living all alone for five years so for me for me as a girl um unfortunately you know we are like uh, we we even we are not animals we even are not animals they still behave to animals better than women we even, I, I myself, I'm not even an animal. Uh, all the women activities, anything which belongs to women is already born. So I, as a woman, what I can do... Gazelle, oh my, Gazelle, Gazelle, yes. say that again. Could you say that again? Because I didn't follow what you said. All Neither women is already bought or something you said. Well, yeah, I didn't, didn't get that last sentence. Okay. I'm not sure what you're saying. Just repeat okay. the last sentence you said, if you would, please. Okay, actually, uh, all women activities is born. Uh, is born. I mean, oh, I banned. as a girl, I'm not banned. allowed. Banned. All right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we are banned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, banned. yeah we are okay. banned right, from you. from the government. Like we are not allowed to ride bicycle. Just simple what? bicycle. Where Just bicycle. Okay. Yeah. I'm not talking about bike. By so, what to the average I, I, man who wants to be decent, who wants to be decent, who wants to respect women, and is still kind of learning the, the new rules of it, as it were, as it were, what, what what can the average man, how can men best serve you, that what that men that want to be decent and treat you as you want to be treated? I think that's my question. What would you ask? It, the fact that you have to answer it, and the fact that I have to ask the question, reflects on our society. I'd like it to be a given. If it were a given, what would it look like to you? For this, I myself, as a girl, what I want from a man to respect me, to trust me, and behave me like a human. Yeah, I'm not his. I'm not his. 
sexual desire too. I'm not his baby producer. I'm not his slave. I'm not the second gender. I am not. This is me, and you accept me as I am. And most importantly, I'm not your honor. That doesn't mean because I'm a woman, so I'm your honor. What do you mean? Honor. I'm your honor. I, what, honor. Are you saying the word down honor? To, yeah, honor, honor based yeah. stuff, isn't it? Yes. Hmm. You imagine. You, I, it's I, very I alien, isn't it? It's, it's very alien. Me. I'm not following it. So you'd like to be able to follow your own path without being told you're bringing shame on this on this fam family or cultural idea, which seems to hold itself in a superior position to you, incorrectly. That's right. Because I, as a woman, I'm nothing but ashamed for my family, for mm. my husband, yeah. mm. for my boyfriend. Mm. Actually, wait, I tell you something. I'm just good for when he needs me. When he doesn't need me, just like a piece of paper, a piece of tissue, he will throw me out. Isn't it? I'm going to say something, Gazelle. We look uh -huh. at this uh -huh. not just from a London viewpoint, because we're not a London centric station, it's a global station, but we look at it, let's just say, from a Western civilization viewpoint, all right? Or be more specific, a European viewpoint. None of those things that you've said apply in Western civilization or in European civilization. Absolutely, completely, and categorically dismiss that. And I'll give you the examples. Okay. We've only got four minutes. So we do. we're going to have to have you back. <laughs> yeah. yeah um, but I'll let apply, Ning but the Merciless will be back, ladies and gentlemen. Gone. Well, but basically, the pushback on that is that we have on estimated 80,000 female genital mutilations in this country. What, in the UK? In the UK. By what? By whom? Oh, yeah, by, by people from our, from other cultures, yeah. Yes, yeah, there we, you go. Thank you. But, that yeah, but that's, bringing the, yes. that's bringing their that's, beliefs over yes, here. That's bringing point. them. You can't, you can't say Jonathan, we live in a world. you're just confirming exactly what I've said. No, I'm not confirming Wish what you, you said. Well, you, okay, let me offer you, you have, a brief. Because this is, a, you a this, is, this is not, you, you don't have, I, I'm sorry. Christ, I don't want to <laughs> you end up sounding like Hitler. You, you, this is not British people. Saying, oh, yeah, we'll have some female mutilation. No, it, no, they're it's not. British. They have a British passport, but that's about it. Come okay, on. but then, well, okay, so that's a, a larger conversation about race and identity and country. I, which think I, know, I think I know what you're saying, and I think the way I would sum it up is this, because I think there's a slight misunderstanding, if I may, from an observer position going on mm -hmm. between Jonathan and Russ. Um, my personal opinion on this is there's things I see like FGM, like slavery, like honor killings, mm. uh, like even enforced marriages. And I don't think that is appropriate in any society, personally, let sure. alone this one. But I don't consider that a British idea or a Thank Neil you. idea. Um, I, some people have those ideas in their country of origin. And like Russ said, bring them here. They bring the cultural means here. Yeah. Um, I don't consider them British ideas. Yes, but here's personally. the thing. If is that fair? To... Well, it's it's fair in the in so far as these are ideas that have been brought from other cultures around the world. However, if you want to say about Britain being a particular kind of nation, we invented the concentration camp. How far are you going to stretch this, Jonathan? Well, only as How far, far are you going to stretch it? Only I know they did. Did. they did it in the Boer uh, War. I know that. Yeah, You're not but, telling uh, us anything only, new. So we're only stretching it as far as to say that people that live here and have a British passport and call themselves British yeah. but still carry out what we would consider as so you two are white British males I was raised by a white family so even though I'm mixed race I have white privilege and for us three talking why do you keep calling it no I'm not going to let that one slip by I'm not yeah. having this white privilege bullshit I'm sorry I'm not going to keep apologising you people. haven't got to apologise for it. anything no, well, you I'm, not going to. I'm, I'm seriously I'm not going to and it's not because you should not and I'm not just being like this because my hand is absolutely killing me at the moment <laughs> as you probably notice it's because I just cannot keep this 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 convert I don't mean this I want you back you've got to come back okay right? come okay. back <laughs> either next week or the week after because we're right out of time gazelle you are well hello calling Kuala Lumpur um Thank you yeah. so much for coming on the show. You've been extraordinary, and we'd love to have you back. There's so much more. Gazelle, and um, yeah, can I just say very quickly, you're getting some wonderful, wonderful comments. I'll just put one on the screen for you to see there uh, from our listeners. So for what it's worth, mm. 
there's an awful lot of thousands of people who are watching and listening to this broadcast that well and truly have yeah. your back. Yeah. So follow your dreams and follow your heart. And I hope you find yeah. a group of people that will nurture and support that for you and give you the love and respect that you deserve. And I really mean that. And last word, Social Me Too, www.socialmetoo.org. We are all men, women, and otherwise non-binary are all having experiences on social media. If they're going around your head, John, yeah. Jonathan, you are heading. You, if I had two hands, you'd be heading for trouble. You're only doing this because I'm crippled at the moment. Non-binary bollocks. Right. We're out of time, Jonathan. Okay. You're coming back, Gazelle. Thank you. Please stay safe. Lots of love to you all. Uh, see you. you. What's today, Wednesday? We'll see you Friday. Bye, gang. See you Friday.